Hey everyone, so we've got two minutes on the term formaldehyde gray. Now I get asked about this every time someone goes and sees a deceased who may be dark in color, or has some funky blotchiness that they don't quite understand. Darkness is not always formaldehyde gray. So formaldehyde gray is the reaction between formaldehyde and the blood in the body. This may not be an instant reaction, it may happen over time. Now where this becomes a problem is if, like out in the capillary areas where there's still blood that doesn't get cleared out and the formaldehyde later reacts to it, or if in the chambers of the heart you get blood settled or fluid settled and then it eventually disperses out and reacts to each other. It's a reaction that often happens after the embalming, when the two connect and this gray color settles in. And it may be in areas you don't always see, but it's when it surfaces onto the face or the hands that other people become aware of it. Now, why doesn't this happen with everybody? There's a few main reasons. If you have really good drainage, because the person was maybe on certain medications that allowed good drainage of the blood or edema, high moisture, being able to embalm right away before the blood clots and pools and settles around the body, these allow that blood to clear out so there's not blood to react with a formaldehyde too. Another thing that will affect whether a person has formaldehyde gray or not is the kidneys in a deceased. Kidneys equal nitrogen, and depending on your nitrogen levels, this may neutralize formaldehyde. When that formaldehyde is neutralized, it's not there to react to the blood, therefore you don't get that formaldehyde gray. This also is one of the reasons that sometimes the formaldehyde is neutralized and you don't get the preservative within a body that you want. Another reason you may not see it in every deceased is a short time span between embalming and burial. So sometimes we will get maybe like a body from another location that they looked great when the person embalmed and then they got flown somewhere else. And when we get them, we're like, what happened? Well, that time that they've been sitting there, that formaldehyde gray has surfaced. On the initial funeral home, they didn't have that visual, but then a few days later, we're left with the formaldehyde gray. How do we combat formaldehyde gray? raising the head so that the formaldehyde can't pool or get to the areas that maybe blood could pool and turn that area gray. I'm using anticoagulants to get the blood moving while we're embalming to push the blood out so we can get the formaldehyde in and that they can't react to each other. We can also use dyes to help keep that balance of color in the body during the whole time by saturating the tissue with the color we want to be there. So there's a lot of different things to think about when we are embalming a person because we want to avoid some of these outcomes that the public sees as so bad with that formaldehyde gray. And we don't want there to be any question. So I wanna thank Ben Schmidt, um, one of the professors at Warsham College for helping me put together some information about formaldehyde gray so that I could easily translate it over um, to explain to you guys. So appreciate you and keep the comments and information coming as to what you want to learn about. Bye.